Hi everyone, it's Vesper. Ignore the pinky, long story. Happy Asexual Awareness Week. I have a lot to say on the topic of this video. I'm gonna try and keep this short and to the point, and I say try, but I know I'm gonna fail, but I will try because there's a typhoon going on outside and I have to be at work in two hours because Japan. For the past two years, I've made videos for Asexual Awareness Week that aim to support my fellow aces and those questioning their place within the asexual community. Because while one of the main goals of Asexual Awareness Week, which I will from now on refer to as AAW, is to spread general awareness about asexuality within society at large, I personally am much more interested in spreading awareness within the asexual community itself and among those who are questioning their place in it. Besides, those two things tend to go hand in hand anyway. As I've mentioned in previous videos for AAW, young aces, old aces, age is one of the many factors of a person's identity and lived experiences that can play a big role in one's relationship with the asexual community, one's ability to even access the asexual community, asexual identity, ace spaces. Every one of us are multifaceted, very complex individuals. And sadly, some of that complexity gets lost or rather glossed over when speaking more broadly about sexuality and identity in general, be it in the form of activism or the creation of resources or educational materials or blanket statements made about asexuals or asexuality. And I know that this is not at all specific to asexuality, but I feel like it very much is an issue within the asexual community in regards to race and ethnicity culture specifically. At no fault of anyone in particular, the asexual communities in multi-ethnic, multi-racial countries such as America, Canada, Australia, the UK, tend to be by far and large and disproportionately white. Or rather, that's the side of the ace community that is most often seen, be it in regards to photos and pamphlets, or awareness and educational material, or just who shows up at meetups or events, or even who, what characters, are headcanoned as asexual. It is the headcanoned, right? I don't even know fandom terminology. But yeah, and the most generalized statements about asexuality that people tend to make are based primarily on the experiences of white aces, which do not necessarily reflect the diverse experiences of people who are not white. And these commonly made statements, stories, recountment of experiences eventually have become almost like narratives within the ace community and within society at large in regards to how they view or think think of the ace community. There often isn't a lot there that would make someone who is navigating their asexuality or sexuality in general in regards to how it relates to their ethnicity, their race, their culture, feel any more at home or represented within the asexual community than anywhere else, even within their own ethnic or racial group. And let there be no mistake that the overall whiteness of the asexual communities in the countries that I mentioned previously, that overall whiteness is not at all reflective of an actual lack of people who aren't white who are asexual because there's no lack of us and more specifically for looking at this as a lack of non-white people identifying as ace I will be very quick to point out the fact that there are various barriers that intersect with racial and ethnic minority groups that make asexual identity, community, spaces, etc. less accessible to people who aren't white. So if the thought of there actually being fewer non-white aces in existence period has ever crossed your mind, Please defer back to what I just said a few seconds ago, because no. One of the main reasons why I made this channel four years ago in 2013 is because when I came out five years ago, I could not find anyone or any resources that existed in the same intersection of race and sexuality as I did. I could not find other people who were not just ace, but also black. And that is not to say in any way or even suggest that those people weren't out there, weren't around, weren't doing things back then. I just could not find them. Sorry to say that so many years later, it feels like not all that much has changed. Yes, there has been progress, but I have no doubt that 
that there are still people like me who are not only ace but another ethnic racial minority on top of that who run into a wall of lack of visibility resources etc that are specific to being in that intersection of identities an example of how this lack of awareness and resources or just generalized statements how those things can affect someone whenever i came across the one percent statistic and for those of you who don't know it's often rattled off quoted that one percent of the population is asexual this is a common statistic that people love to throw out there which I now call bullshit on by the way whenever I came across that statistic and even now that number hurts me in a way that seems to not be the case for everyone and I know I'm not the only one hurt by that number for various reasons for any number of reasons but but specifically when it comes to being ace and an ethnic racial cultural minority within a minority that hurts in a way that I feel like I cannot expect anyone who is not also black or otherwise in a similar position to me racially, ethnically, culturally to relate to that. For example, another way in which I felt disconnected from the asexual community, ace awareness, ace activism is in regards to the general consensus and the way that gender roles can affect how someone experiences or is confronted with social being asexual. Because yes, while I do agree with the general consensus that gender roles very much do affect what people are faced with within society as an asexual person, there seems to be a general lack of awareness consideration given to how race and culture, ethnicity further affects those gender roles that also affect how or what one is faced with within society as an asexual. It's not just gender, you're a woman and you're ace and you're faced with these things. No, it's more complicated than that. But I see all of these general statements made that don't seem to acknowledge that. Because I first navigated the road to asexuality as someone who at that point in time did not actively identify as not being a woman, the most readily accessible narratives to me were that of what it's like to be an ace woman. Even though that is not true because I am not a woman. Let's get that straight for those of you who haven't seen my other videos. Expectations of abstinence or holding out until marriage and how that gets confused with asexuality. Being considered a prude for not putting out. Common narratives, debunked myths about asexuality didn't really do anything for me personally. Even though I'm sure they did plenty for some people, both white and not white. For me personally, yeah not so much, if anything at all. That did not help me at all when faced with the much more common for me personally expectation about the ferocity of my sexual appetite. Nor did it help me navigate the reactions that I got about my lack of interest in sex. Cause my lack of interest in sex was never mistaken either by society, me, or my partner as being me holding out for marriage and me not putting out or wanting to put out was never me being a prude, it was just me being weird for a black person, specifically for a black person. One more thing to add to the long list of things that people considered me whitewashed for or not black enough for. Where was discussion of that? Where were those narratives? Where were people discussing those things of what it's like to be asexual and black and and be faced with a combination of stereotypes and misconceptions at the intersection of those things. They were nowhere that I could find. While I watched others share stories about the barriers, obstacles that they faced on the road to asexuality, I share some things in common with those overall narrative stories, common things that people face, but yet there's a whole nother set of things that I face 
that I had no means of reconciling or dealing with except on my own. In that regard, a lot of asexual awareness and activism and resources failed me. Fostering and building a sense of community at times very much failed me because it just made me feel even less in touch with this community that didn't at all really take into consideration my particular situation and didn't seem to have anyone in it visibly at least, that shared those things with me. It felt like the asexual community was made up of just white people, which it obviously isn't, but that's what it felt like. And when I'm faced with a bunch of people telling me that I'm white for being asexual, to have a community that on its surface is in fact just white plus me, that just served to further the fucked up racist bullshit that others were feeding me. And there was nothing to counter that, to balance that, to offset that for me, except my own logic, which took a while to get around to. And finally, meeting other aces who aren't white, even if they were not black either. Five years later from when I came out, how much has actually changed? Not enough, I feel like, because I am, either, like I've said before, I have no doubt that there are people who find themselves, even today, in the exact situation that I was in five years ago. Some things have changed, but not enough. To those of you watching this who are an ethnic or racial minority, who find yourself to be a minority within a minority, who perhaps have felt failed by or left out of asexual activism, awareness efforts, and community, I hear you. To those of you watching this who feel like a minority within a minority within a minority because you find yourself at odds with the asexual community at times, but not just the asexual community, even with your own ethnic or racial group, I hear you, I see you, who feel felled by both of these groups simultaneously, who feels like you occupy this space in between both of these groups who will never fully be accepted or recognized by either of them. I see you and I hear you. You are not alone in that complex intersection of a sexuality, race, culture, ethnicity, and a million other things that I'm sure make up who you are. You are not alone because there are lots of us there with you. It's hard, it really is, and it can feel like the brunt of the work that needs to be done for us as a community to be not only acknowledged but actively included rests on our shoulders at times when it shouldn't and it doesn't. I kind of mentioned this before, but the reason why I made this channel is not to educate people or to be a token out there on YouTube, non-white, asexual, for people to point to as an example of how not white the asexual community is because people actually do that, no. I made this channel for myself and for people like you, for people like us, to see someone out there who is not just asexual and not just black, but non-binary, a million other things, that we are complex individuals, you are a complex individual, and you are allowed to be complex because you are complex. And that cannot be simplified. And I decided to do that not because of any false sense of obligation, but because I felt that that was something that I could do and something that I wanted to do. And if I'm allowed to be positive for one second, I will say that there seem, there does seem to be more people out there talking about such intersections today than in the past. It's just a matter of people really need to uplift those voices more so that people like us can find them. And I'm making a small playlist of videos talking about asexuality by people who you may be able to relate to in this regard. If you have anything to add or any recommendations, suggestions, please let me know in the comments of this video. And now to backtrack because I know for a fact that the vast majority of the people who watch my videos, who subscribe to me on YouTube, and who follow me on Tumblr, I know that the majority of you are white. And to be honest, that is something that at times makes me hesitant to actually talk about ethnic or racial things in any sort of depth. 
For one, it can be awkward, very awkward to be honest. Hello, Calcifer. But also because whenever I talk about such topics to a majority white audience, it feels like I have to do so in a way that's educational, in a way that's saying, this is how you can be a good ally rather than being able to talk about it in a way that I really want to talk about it, of venting about, God, this is my experience and it sucks and actually getting like solidarity and empathy from others who have the same or similar experiences. Because how can I vent about or talk about something and even hope for solidarity or empathy if the majority of my audience has never been there? And sympathy tends to be how people respond to such things when they themselves do not experience those things and sympathy isn't the last thing that I'm looking for when I talk about these things. But see, that's just it. That's the catch-22. How can I hope for help from those who are more visible, who are more prominent in the community, who have never experienced the things that I have experienced without putting my voice out there for them to uplift, without putting my experiences out there without to some regard or another being the educator that I really don't want to have to be. So to allies or would-be allies, here's a little parting tip that I'll leave with you today. There is no single easy way to make the asexual community, asexual spaces, asexual resources, etc more inclusive and this should go without saying and I'm sure it does for most of you but I just need to put it out there. A common mistake that I often see is people throwing out the term POC or people person of color throwing it out there to show inclusivity but they're using it wrong. They're using it as this big enormous catch-all blob of non-whiteness to refer blanketly to any and everyone who is not white and that is not how that term works. On the other hand, I see people who are aware of that but who still use PLC as if referring to some actual monolithic group of people when in fact people of color are hella fucking diverse and we do not all experience sexualization, oppression, racism, etc. in the same way. Please realize that PLC describes a hella diverse group of people with equally diverse needs. And if asexual activism, asexual awareness efforts, asexual resources, etc. are going to meet the needs of that diverse group of people and be inclusive of that diverse group of people, those resources, that activism, that awareness effort needs to be equally diverse. Uplifting the voices of the people who actually exist in that intersection of identities and lived experiences is of the utmost importance. Don't just parrot secondhand information if you can avoid doing so. But on the other hand, don't just search out and uplift that one black person who has an opinion that you happen to agree with. Do not just uplift one Latinx person and say or call yourself uplifting the lives of all Latinx people or POC in general. Please, please uplift all of our voices and acknowledge the fact that one person saying one thing is not that person speaking for an entire ethnic group. Please do not treat me or anyone else like a token who speaks for an entire group of people because I speak for no one but myself. Being a true ally does take a lot of effort and requires you to actively educate yourself and it is a lifelong commitment. Are you ready for that? Do you have what it takes? I hope so. Anyway, this video has gotten ridiculously long. I said I'd keep it short and sweet, but yeah, in traditional Vesper fashion, no. Word vomit, word vomit everywhere. But I hope, I feel like this word vomit was at least important, and if you made it through all of it, hats off to you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome Asexual Awareness Week, and I will see you next time. Bye. On a random side note, have you guys seen any other Asexual Awareness Week videos for 2017 out there floating around somewhere? Even if it's weeks, whatever, later? Let me know because maybe I'll compile a list of them somewhere so people can find them. That would be awesome, I think.